G'day. Welcome to Animal Tales with Tim Faulkner. I'm Tim Faulkner, and this is a Galapagos tortoise. Meet Hugo, a 70-year-old, but still a teenager, Galapagos tortoise. Now he's one of the superstars here at the park, and we love him like a child. Now, Galaps can live to up to 200 years old. Can you imagine that? And they live in the Galapagos Islands. It's really interesting because how did a tortoise that can't swim, or swim very well, get onto an island? Maybe that's a little bit of your homework today. There was a very famous explorer and naturalist. His first name was Charles. He was the first one to really work with and describe these tortoises. So you figure out how did a tortoise that can't swim across oceans end up on islands? Now, I want you to look at a few things. Now, you can see this carrot, but he loves a neck scratch. Have a look at a few things. He's actually got a beak like a bird. He's got two nostrils. You might be able to see him right now, but one, two. He breathes air, just like us. Now, his eyes, he has actually quite good vision, especially color vision, because the foods that they eat, even in the wild, are colored, different berries and vegetables and plants. They're herbivores. They only eat uh, vegetables, plant matter. Now, the eyes have good vision, but if you can see in here, there's a little bit of white secretion in there. They actually secrete a bit of salt through their eyes. They live on islands that are in the middle of the ocean and there's a lot of salt so they can secrete it through there. Now, he's got quite a soft neck because on the islands they actually don't have any predators or many, um, certainly not nowadays. So the skin here is quite soft, but on top of the head, it's really scaly. Look at this big shell. I just tapped my ring on it. Hear that? Now the shell is made from the same material as your fingernails, keratin. Now, for Galaps, they don't really live in family groups, but where they do live, the areas they feed around muddy wallows, you will have a big, a big male and lots of females. So they do live together in low, in, 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 uh, low density social groups. Hello, mate. What I love about Hugo is he's like a real person. We know him. Every day we talk to him. Look at him right now. It's just tickle time. I know that. You can see that. Hugo wants a tickle. I've got food in my hand and he wants to tickle more because we always tickle before we eat. Now, if you come down to their feet, these big claws, their strong feet. And Hugo weighs over 100 kilograms. It's heavy, right? So these legs support them and they enable them to walk around wherever they want to go. Tortoises lay eggs, females do. So they mate and the female carries the eggs inside her and then she'll bury them underground. They actually dig a hole. And in the soil, those eggs incubate. Now what incubate means is the eggs have to be at a particular temperature, and maybe 30 degrees. And the sun will come and warm that patch every day. And after a couple of months, little Galapagos tortoises hatch. And even though they're tiny, They've got to stay out of the way of a big fella like this. But even though they're tiny, they still eat the same things and they do the same things and they grow very slowly. When you live to 200 years old, you know, a teenager for us is from 13 onwards. But really, a teenager or that stage of their life for a Galapagos tortoise is about this age at 60 to 70 years old. Now, watch this when he eats. Try and listen too. And he doesn't chew his food very well. Watch, now he swallows it. There it goes. Watch the tongue inside. So he's got a great sense of smell too. Not just that he can breathe through his nose. He wants to take it all. He's cheeky. When he bites, he can bite right through it. But he bites a little bit because he wants to take it from me. No, see, he wants to, look. He wants to take it. And he's actually quite intelligent. You think about that, instead of just chomping at it, he bites softly because he knows if he bites softly, he can try and take it from me, but I'm not gonna let him have it until I get down to my fingers. And they do everything slowly. Mostly that's because of their diet. It's not really high in nutrient or energy. So when you move nice and slow, 
you conserve energy, like a koala or a sloth. Also, because of the weight of this big shell, if you tried to move fast, you'd probably break your bones. So it's a nice way of movement. Now, their threats in the wild are very few, normally. But nowadays, you might have pigs on the island. They dig up the nests. You could have introduced disease from people that travel there. And poaching, which is when people go and steal turtles. But they've got a great level of protection now. And hopefully, like old Hugo here, they'll be around for thousands of years to come. Now, I've already given you one bit of homework. And that was to figure out how a tortoise that can't swim across the ocean ended up on an island. Now, the second bit of homework that I'd like you to figure out is how do they heat themselves? So they still need to stay quite warm, not too cold, not too hot. But what do they do on a hot day? How do they stay cool? What do they do on a cool day? How do they stay hot? Figure that out. See you next time. Thanks for watching everyone. Now, the keepers and I are looking after all of our animals and our families, but we all have a bit of extra time at the moment, like you probably do too. So this is a great distraction for us and hopefully you. Now, if you like what you've seen or wanna show me your homework, just put it into the comments. This is what I do, connecting people with nature and that can't stop. I'll see you next time.